Hello everyone, today I'm going to be delving back into the Sorcerer Kings for Conquest by Parabellum Games, and this time I'm going to take a look at a trio of heroes for them, as I check out the Maharaja, the Raj, and the Siddhar. Okay, so these are the three characters we're going to be looking at for the Sorcerer Kings, the Maharaja, your Raj, and your Sadar. Uh, so we're going to take a look at each one of them in turn. Okay, so our first character is the Maharaja, of which you can only have one in your actual faction army. I pop the box open. It contains... Here we go. A set of cards. So your combat stack card um, to designate his activation, little QR code on it. Then intrusive thoughts, spiteful winds, fiery dominion and conflagration. These are the spells that he can choose from. Standard conquest backing. Uh, and again, QR codes to bring you to the links for those. Um, standard infantry tray. And then our resin pieces. So we have a staff there inside its own little baggy. Fair bit of flashing on them. Uh, it seems to be the way they cast. But a four piece build. The main body is pretty much complete. Head and hands to go on, and that's it. And looking on first blush, bit of a seam line under the arm. And again, some minor flashing, which will come off with a brush, but otherwise quite, quite cleanly cast, no bubbles or slippage. Uh, very detailed head there, huge turban and his flaming crest. And then we have our hands. So let's get them built up and we'll talk about them in game terms in a bit more detail. Okay, so the Maharaja is built. Um, you can only have a single Maharaj in your force, I believe, for each court. Build was very simple. Um, head, two hands on, and everything else was done. So Cute enough. Clean up was easy. Still have to straighten out the staff, which I haven't yet. That just requires heat. I uh, thought I'd show you as is. But yeah, very crisply detailed. A um, little bit of clean up may be required where the seams uh, appeared for the two halves of the mould. So under that armpit, you might see some. So it sort of runs along and down. And then it ran around the, the back of the cloak and along the bottom and top of these arms. So, like I say, cleanup's minimal. Detail is absolutely gorgeous on it. Game terms, um, he is essentially um, your sort of main caster. Uh, he brings a lot of buffs to the army, uh, including the ability to have additional mainstay regiments in your um, retinue warbands. So instead of being capped at four regiments per warband, you can take an extra mainstay, bringing you up to five. So you can theoretically bring spam style lists or load up on the bigger, more impressive pieces of kit um, because you can, you've got many more slots you can fill. Uh, depending on how you put your list together. Uh, up next are his cards. So I thought I'd talk about the cards very briefly. Um, the Maharaja, obviously, his card goes into the command stack to tell you when it activates. However, rather than being um, your standard spells, these are rituals, and this is a defining trait of the Sorcerer Kings that 
they have access to rituals and during their activation the characters mostly casters but not always um, have ways of adding ritual tokens to these once you've got enough ritual tokens so for example i believe conflagration requires five tokens on it um, and they can come not just from the maharaja but also from um, the siddhar or even the raj they stack up when you hit your cap, when you hit the, the maximum you need to cast this spell, the ritual tokens come off. This then goes into your hand or into your deck at the end of the turn and becomes part of your command stack. So you don't trigger the spell automatically. It's not like a ranged spell from some of the other casters in game. This is something you prep over a number of rounds potentially and then when you hit that point in your stack during your turn, so when conflagration comes out, it's then activated as if you were activating your um, your regiment or unit that would normally be pulled out via the command stack. You then resolve the ritual effect at that stage. Uh, and generally, most of the rituals that I've seen, uh, the final part is draw the top card from your command stack, and if it is X... And X might be um, something that has the Court of Fire or Court of Air attached to it. Then you get to play that immediately. So you can potentially trigger a very powerful spell in these rituals and then still activate a unit afterwards. Uh, and obviously when building your command, stack, command deck, you know how that stack is going to be resolved. So you hit the conflagration, you know that's going to go off and you know that a fire elemental will get to activate afterwards, so you would put that card next. So you know that you're going to get ritual followed by activation of a unit, uh, which is a very powerful thing and an interesting way they work. Okay, next up is our Raj, another one of our casters for the Sorcerer King. Inside the box, again we have the cards, so activation card, and then the spells, they are accessible. Our infantry base or stand, and our model itself, along with their base. So, Bit more cleanup required on this. Oh, well, no, actually, I thought those were slightly bigger seams, but it, it actually appears to be another just very thin line of flashing. That'll clean up when I put it in its little uh, hot water bath. A curved blade, again, fair amount of flashing on it, but Looks to be relatively well cast. And then his spell effect itself, which I could almost leave that on for the spell effect, but we'll get him cleaned up and see exactly how good he is. Next up, we have the Raj, um, similar to the Maharaja in that they are a caster with access to rituals. Uh, they have some similar rituals and also some slightly different rituals that the uh, Maharaja doesn't have access to. So depending on who you take, you may have different abilities available. A um, bit more of a close combat buffing character, although some of his rituals are still attacking. The uh, model itself went together very easily. Arms neatly nestle in there. And with these, there's so much intricate detail on the actual models themselves. You may want to keep the arms separately if you're a good painter uh, to allow access to all of the fine detail. Um, if you're like me, you'll spray it all black and dry brush it heavily. Don't worry about it. Move on with your life. Uh, but I absolutely love the, the sort of um, spell whipping around behind them, flowing that way. 
unlike the Maharaja, he acts, has access to both courts, or he rather he counts as being part of both the court of air and court of fire, um, which means then he has the benefit of buffing both types of units in the game as well. He is also a big fellow, around 40 mil to eye level. So big, big, chunky figures. Absolutely beautifully detailed though, especially with this Eastern feel to them. A lot of intricate design work going in there and things like the scale armor is gorgeous as well. So that's our uh, Raj. All right, our final character to look at is the combat character, the Siddhar. So again, boxed in a similar fashion, again with the stand. Though I imagine he is a character and will be leading a retinue. So just a single card as he is not a caster, but a fighter. And with him, we have our most complicated build, potentially. He also requires an arm and a cloak to go on, as well as his head. I don't think that's going to be overly taxing. Again, nothing particularly egregious. Fair bit of flashing, but very thin. See the sprue gates on his feet. This one on the back of the heel. Maybe a little visible when based. No, well, we'll see. I think it's mostly down enough we should be okay. But nothing immediately eye-catching as far as bubbles or issues with that. Okay, so the Sadar is built. There he is in all his epic finery. Uh, and here is the model doing exactly the same thing. Um, build for this one, relatively straightforward. Arm, head, cloak, all sat in neatly. Uh, this cross arm didn't do it for me. Uh, there was a mortise and tenon to connect here. Um, and I feel one of them was a little bit bigger than it should have been, or smaller, depending. Uh, in the end, I just cut um, the the pin off and glued it flat. Uh, it is a resin model. It takes glue beautifully once you've scuffed the surface. So um, that may just have been my cast. It may have squeezed the, um, the, the hole that the peg was gonna go into. So had that, not major issue, issue. Uh, sorted. A uh, little bit of cleanup required from the two halves of the mole, so there's a bit of a seam line, but otherwise clean as a whistle and absolutely beautiful. In game terms, uh, he's very limiting in what he can bring. Um, humans, essentially, not bringing elementals of freaks gins or anything else, uh, he can bring the massive Mahout um, alabaster elephant. Uh, and he also has the ability to uh, buff things like the uh, Raja Kur uh, infantry units as well. So when they're capturing objectives, they count as being larger than they are. Again, beautiful work on the armor should paint up a treat and no major issues with the casting. And he is sneakily only 35 mil tall because he's creeping along like a creepy thing. Uh, so there we have it, the Sadar. So there we have uh, three of our Sorcerer King heroes, the Maharaja, Raj and Sadar. Um, depending whether you want to go very combat effective or super into your magic. Um, they're all viable in different ways. He 
Um, I'm not saying he's an auto-include, but what I will say is I won't be putting any lists together that don't include him, uh, because why would I not um, bring a Maharaja to any fight? He's fantastic. Uh, beautiful sculpts as always, and a really interesting way in which the Sorcerer Kings prepare their magic and their rituals as well, giving them a, a very different feel from some of the other casters in other armies. Alrighty then, another set of beautiful resins from Parabellum once again, uh, really intricate detailing on them and really evocative of the East, uh, the Orient and the Sorcerer King's mysticism. So some really nice posing, uh, really fine detail and that elemental theme coming through on all of the miniatures. Well worth having a look at these uh, if you're interested in a fantasy army that's a little bit different from more uh, Renaissance European. And uh, let me know what you think below. Next time, I'll be back with some more interesting stuff from the Sorcerer Kings. Bye bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.